How many people does it take to write a song? I was looking at the new Coldplay record that came out. There was a song called We Pray. 15 different people writing this one song. Everybody loves Coldplay. Why am I saying this? Because I just watched one of Rick Beato's videos, and he went after Coldplay. I understand that they're not the band that I fell in love with and that many of you fell in love with. I realize they have gone to find their own way and now into the rap world with this song, We Pray, which was the center of Rick's rant. I'm going to call it a rant. It was a rant. This is a rant. I don't know if I've done a rant. We're going to see how this goes. I love Rick Beato. I watch all of his videos I have for years, and I'm going to keep watching him. And I think he's a master at YouTube, and he just knows how to do this. I haven't cleaned myself up. And here I am talking to you about what he said that got me all worked up, which means it's getting a bunch of other people worked up, and then he can pay for all the interviews with Duran Duran. The issue at hand is songwriting credits. There are 15 or so songwriting credits on the latest Coldplay single. 15 people? I don't know what they're doing, unless they're just taking people off the street. There's somebody that walked into the studio. Oh, oh, you shouldn't have come in here. Oh, now we gotta give them 1% of the song. I mean, it's really ridiculous, right? Which is a collaboration with a bunch of other singers uh, around the globe. People that I had not heard of, but apparently were a pretty big deal. When you look them up, people know them in other places besides Carrollton, Texas. Rick has mentioned many times that uh, he doesn't like this idea of a lot of people gathering together in a room to write songs. And historically, it used to be one person, two people, maybe three people. Back in the 60s, we'll just start there, there were many songwriters that wrote their own songs. You may know Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell. If you then fast forward to the 70s and 80s, in Nashville, it started to become more common to have three songwriters. And this remained the case for years and years. And I get all of that. It doesn't take... 15 people to write a song. However, he made a few comments in the video that I think we should at least look at this particular song a little bit different than other songs where a bunch of people get together, they're trying to find a hit, they're doing everything they possibly can, and they write stuff that he would call boring, which was how he closed his video. I'd love to know your thoughts about this, because I think this phenomenon is just making music incredibly boring. He mentioned that the band, uh, the four guys, are listed as songwriters. And he questioned why that was the case. Because the drum part was electronic and the bass part was a synth line. You have generally the core of the song. You have the four Coldplay guys who I can't hear anything of. This is synth bass. This is programmed drums. I'm not sure if there's any guitar in there. I don't remember hearing any guitar. So the guys in Coldplay, they're contributing in that they're in the band. The band could have decided years ago that they were going to split all Coldplay songs four ways. I can't speak with authority on this. I don't know. But in this particular track, they were all listed. My guess is they're listed on everything. And I don't see any issue with that. And as far as the parts being played, well... What is the difference between playing a bass guitar and playing a synth line on a keyboard and coming up with the sounds? What's the difference between programming a drum part and playing a drum part? Are they different? Isn't the creative output the same, even if the method used to play those particular instruments is different? Now, they did bring in the heavy hitter, Max Martin. And, you know, you can question that. You can think, why does Coldplay need to do that? But what he was getting to at the end, and what got me all riled up, is he was talking about how all of these people are what make modern music sound boring. And that just seems like a giant leap from this one particular song that was a collaboration with stars from around the world that I didn't know. Rick probably doesn't know either. That's my guess. You know, in an attempt to make something that is communal. When I went to a concert and heard all those people, all different colors, all different races, all nationalities, everything, all in Dallas, Texas in the Cotton Bowl, it was fantastic. There was a puppet thing, which was kind of weird if you know what I'm talking about. But the rest of it was just 
an experience that you can't really get with any other band. I can't think of any other band. Now, as far as songwriting credit goes, if there are multiple other guest vocalists, I think there were at least three or four, then, and if they wrote parts for the song, if they wrote lyrics, shouldn't they be credited? So now we're up to four, five with Max Martin, six, seven, eight, nine. Now there's still six more. I don't know what, who those people were. I don't know what their story was. I'm editing. I forgot a story, and it actually is a very important story. A while back, I was on Instagram, like I do. I saw an Instagram story from Sylvan Esso, the guy from Sylvan Esso, and he was talking about how he just got a call from Chris Martin. Apparently, Coldplay really liked this particular drum groove in a song, and they asked if they could use it. And the funny thing about the groove, and this is all from the Sylvan Esso guy, the engineers could have easily recreated that groove in the studio and it would have been just fine. No one would have cared. But come to find out, that drum loop was part of another project that the Sylvan Esso guy was working on. Forgive my lack of names here. And so Coldplay ends up giving credit to both the Sylvan Esso guy and the other guy that he was working with. I said guy so many times there. Not talking about guy, the bass player for Coldplay. Again, I don't know if it's this song, but that's two more people. I guess I'll... In today's day and age where the money is not as easy to get on the back end and all that, is it the worst thing in the world if a band lets other people in on their cut of the money from the songwriting? Is it that big a deal and does it really contribute to boring music if you are working in more people into a track? Doesn't that depend on the song and the way that it comes together? There are so many ways to skin a cat, which is a very weird phrase that I've never said before. The chances of me actually publishing this are about 3%. I should probably share a few more of my controversial opinions. I think you missed on this one, Rick. Just, but I believe in you. And I am very excited to see what is to come from you and your team. As long as there's not too many people on that team. Talk soon.